Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got an interesting one today. On the desk, I've got myself a laptop here that looks like your run-of-the-mill Lenovo laptop. However, if I pull the screen off, yes, I can pull the screen off on this thing, it turns into an Android tablet, and I get the best of both worlds here. And when I've got the tablet running, the computer is still on and operating, so I can use the Windows side of this hooked up to a display while I take the display with me and run Android on it. And there's a couple of other neat little things you can do with this device, which we are going to explore in a minute. They call this the ThinkBook Plus Gen 5 Hybrid. And before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. I also want to add that Lenovo is a recent sponsor here on the channel. We did uh, take a trip to cover IFA, which they were the sponsor for, but they are not sponsoring this video. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, this does have quite a hefty price tag, $3,500 at the time I'm shooting this video. For that price, you get the computer part, the tablet part, an easel stand here, which is not all that portable, and a pen but you're still paying quite a premium for this. In fact, you could probably buy a comparably equipped tablet and computer for less, but here you've got them together. And what we see out of Lenovo is that rather than let things fester in an R&D lab for years before they release something, they often take these crazy ideas and just make a product out of it to see if it sticks. And I suspect that's what's happening here. So if the sales are somewhat brisk on this, we might see a lower cost version in the future or else this may be the last iteration of this concept but i found it's actually fairly well executed as we'll see as we work our way through the review now inside on the windows side we have a core ultra 7 155h processor 32 gigabytes of ddr5 ram which is not upgradable but with 32 gigs you're good to go there a one terabyte nvme ssd and then on the display side you've got a 14 inch 2.8 k oled which runs at 100% of DCI-P3 and covers Dolby Vision uh, for its uh, HDR modes. I don't have a nits level on the display, but it looks probably in the 500 to 800 nit territory. So nice and bright. The OLED looks great as they usually do on these PCs. And of course, this is a touch display, both on the Windows side and on the Android side. Now the tablet side of the equation here is very well equipped. It's got a nicely performing Snapdragon 8 Plus processor inside, along with 12 gigabytes of its own memory. On top of that, it has a 256 gigabyte storage device built in as well. So it can operate completely on its own. In fact, most of the time, the Android side of the equation here is running alongside the Windows one. So when you are docked here, right now I'm in Windows, I can just hit this button here and very easily switch over to the Android side of the system here. And they're both running uh, at the same time. And I'll show you some ways that you can access the Android side from the Windows side as we go a little bit further into the review here. So it's pretty easy to switch back and forth here and it feels fairly elegant in its execution if having two devices in one is important to you. It is though pretty heavy as far as devices go. So this is coming in all together here at about 3.87 pounds or 1.7 kilograms. So it is a bit heavier compared to other 14 inch laptops on the market at the moment, but you've got two separate devices basically in the form factor of one. The display on its own is about 1.7 73 pounds. It is all metal, so it's got a nice build quality to it, and overall it feels as premium as its price would suggest. You don't get much in the way of ports on this one, so when it is docked here, you've got a Thunderbolt 4 port on this side along with a headphone jack, and then on the other side, you've got another Thunderbolt port and a power button, and that is it. Right here are the antennas for all of the wireless communication that the Windows side of the device can do. As you can see here on the back, we've got a couple of cameras. Nothing crazy here. You've got a 13 megapixel camera and a five megapixel wide angle camera. They look about the same as most tablets do, not spectacular, but they're passable and certainly more than what you get on a typical Windows laptop. On the Windows side, you can access the regular 13 megapixel camera from the Windows camera app in addition to 
the camera here at the top, and this will work on both systems. It is a 1080p camera. The display quality out of it, as you can see, is not great, um, but it is passable for doing conference calls and that sort of thing, and it looks the same whether you're in Windows or on the Android side. But it's pretty neat just how elegantly all this stuff comes together when it is docked. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, you could probably get about 20 hours out of this, provided you switch from Windows to the tablet operating system midstream. So I think you'll get about 10 hours or so of basic work out of the Windows component. It does have a pretty big 75 watt hour battery on board and probably an equal amount of time from the Android side just because it consumes less power. The display brightness though needs to be turned down for the best battery performance because these OLED displays do consume a good amount of power. So if you keep that display brightness down, stick to basic work, you can get a lot of longevity out of this, provided you don't mind switching operating systems midstream. Now, the Android display portion here charges through the computer normally, but if you detach it here and plug a USB Type-C power supply into the USB-C port here, you can charge it independently. It does not, though, have any display output capabilities from the Android side. So although you can plug external displays into the Windows component here through its Thunderbolt ports, this port is just data and power only. Now, like other Lenovo laptops, it's got a very nice keyboard and trackpad. The key travel is not as deep as I would like, given how thick the case is, but it's not bad to type on. The keys are large and well-spaced, and Lenovo has long perfected their keyboards here, and they are always very good. The trackpad here is equally on par with other higher-end Lenovo devices I have looked at. There's a number of biometric options for logging into Windows. So on the side here, the power switch works as a fingerprint reader, and the camera here also has infrared, so you can use facial recognition to log into the Windows side of the device without having to use your PIN or password. The facial recognition works on the Android side as well, but there is no fingerprint option when the display is detached. All right, let's see how these two pieces now work together. So right now we are in Windows mode and I've got my computer here hooked up to a docking station. So we're able to mirror the video output. And if you look here, of course, we've got Windows going on both screens. But if I hit the key here and switch over to Android mode, the keyboard will be disabled, and I will get a warning message about that here, telling me that uh, the keyboard and trackpad are not available to Windows unless I plug in some other device to control the computer. But it stays running there in the background, and now we've got the Android device here pulled up working as an Android computer. So that's one way that we can use these things together. Now what I'm going to do is switch back over to the Windows side. So we'll hit the button here to switch back. The Android tablet continues to run in the background, but now we've got our keyboard and trackpad back once more. But here's something cool. We've got this thing called Hybrid Stream. So if I load this up while the Android component is attached to the system, I can stream the Android screen to my Windows computer here. So I can actually use the Android tablet from inside of Windows. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't work the other way around. So you can't control the Windows computer from the Android side, uh, but you can do the reverse here uh, as we are looking at things. And of course, I can use the touch display like I would in the native Android mode. This is streaming, so the video quality isn't as good as it would be on the actual display. There's also a little bit of lag on the touch screen because we are streaming the video output from Android to Windows, but it is a good, quick and easy way to get at the Android side of the system when you are in Windows mode. Another interesting little quirky thing here is that when you set this thing up, you are now going to once again get an A drive on your system. I haven't had an A drive since I had a floppy drive, but what this is is a shared folder between the Android and Windows side of the system. It will sync this up. So for example, if I take this photo here and drag it into the folder, I can click on it here inside of Windows and look at the image or edit the document. And if I hit the button here to switch over to Android and I go into my Android system here into the files, let's do that real quick. So we'll jump into my files app and I can load up that image here 
on the Android side just as easily because that file is synced up between both places. So if you have an editor that can work with a Word document or something, you could work on the Word document both on the Windows side and the Android side. But note this is a syncing procedure, not a live access to the file because you might detach the display and take it with you. So you do need to make sure you need to avoid collisions where you're editing the file on both systems at the same time. So there are some ways to move things back and forth, a little less elegantly perhaps than the hardware here, but it is possible uh, based on how they set things up with this hybrid method. All right, let's take a look at a fun little demo here. I've got the Aether SX2 emulator running, which is a PS2 emulator, and we're running Burnout Revenge here at full speed at 60 frames per second on the Android side of the system here. So as you can see, that Snapdragon processor has got a lot of capacity here. It's a great device for emulation and other types of gaming activity along with regular Android apps. We'll look at some pen activity in a minute here. Now, if I hit the button on the Windows side with my controller attached up via Bluetooth, I have No Man's Sky running here, and I can switch back and forth very quickly between the two systems here, and everything seems to be working pretty well. Performance in gaming out of this uh, Core uh, Ultra 7 processor is about where I've seen other ones land with this game and others. So, for example, right now in No Man's Sky, we're pulling about 40 to 50 frames per second at 1920 by 1200 at the standard settings. They recently updated the graphics in this game so they're a little more demanding than they used to be, but you can run games like this and Red Dead Redemption 2 and others at playable frame rates, even with just the Intel hardware, which is pretty nice to see here. So I can jump into my spaceship here and maybe uh, take a quick break from No Man's Sky and jump back over to the Android side of the equation and keep playing my other game here. So pretty cool. And the performance on both systems is very, very good, which it should be for its price point. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark test running on the Windows PC side, we got a score of 25,078 on the regular version of that test and 6,142 on the extreme version. That lines up very favorably with a MacBook Air, for example, insofar as its graphics performance is concerned. Looking over at the tablet performance on that same test, we got a score of 10,955 out of its Snapdragon 8 Plus processor on the regular test and 2,773 out of the extreme test. And you can see that lines up very closely with what you might get out of an Apple A15 tablet chip. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 98.7%, which indicates that we shouldn't see too much thermal throttling when it's placed under sustained load. Fan noise out of this is very minimal. There's no fan on the tablet side and on the window side, it is very, very subdued, even under heavy loads. So a pretty quiet operation all the way around. Now it does come with a pen and the pen works on the window side of the system and the Android side of the system. On Android here, I'm running an app called Nebo, which is a note-taking app that came pre-installed and it seems to work just fine here. Although there is a bit of latency to the pen here, as you can see that line having to catch up with my writing here. So not the best pen experience. The display is a bit slippery, but the pen does work. And if we shoot back here into Windows mode, let me get everything reconfigured. You can see how it works on the Windows side. So you do have to get it kind of in the right spot here for it to redock itself. It's not always the easiest thing to do. There we go. And now that we're back in Windows, if I log back in here, you can see the pen picks up automatically right when I switch back. And then if I go back over to Android once again, it goes right in here. So it's pretty cool in the sense that it seamlessly switches back and forth between different systems. But on the Windows side, because you can't use the display flat, it's a little harder to work with the pen here. So this is about as far back as you can get with the display in Windows mode here, but still kind of neat that you can go back and forth with the pen. So who is this device for? That is hard to say, given the fact that it's a very expensive device, and I'm not sure how many people actually need something that can run both Windows and Android at the same time like this does. But it is a very nice tablet, and it's a very nice Windows laptop, and it works pretty well insofar as switching back and forth and making use of both systems simultaneously. So there's probably some use case here. What I liked most about it is that its performance, no matter which operating system you're using, is very snappy here. So the Snapdragon processor on the Android side feels great, 
And of course, you've got the nice Intel chip on the other side that makes it also a very good PC here. So when we switch over to the Windows side and we jump into our web browser, we get equally snappy performance here out of that Core Ultra 7. So that's the nice thing. One of the things that I'm noticing on this though is that because your hardware doesn't change when you switch between operating systems, you have to take a second to reset your brain insofar as how the OS works because Android and Windows are very different from each other, especially insofar as how they handle uh, window management and applications and everything else. So I found the Android experience to be a little bit better when I get the display off and use it like a tablet because my brain is able to process that a little better than having a Windows machine one minute with the same hardware and an Android machine the next. But it does switch back and forth here quite nicely. The performance is good on both operating systems to do basic video editing, nothing spectacular, but stringing clips together should be fine. Gaming on both systems is great. And the collective battery life here is also pretty good to get you through a pretty long time away from a power connection. However, you will be using different operating systems and applications to get the work done if you do have to switch midstream from Windows back over to Android. So altogether, it's not something I can probably recommend to many people, but it is out there and available to those who want to spend the money to get it. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.